Sarah lives in bike-friendly city of Portland, Oregon, with her husband, two cats, a beehive, and a giant garden. I'll pass it on to Sarah now. So, I'm Sarah Sharp, and I'm here to talk about vampire mice. Now, I'm not talking about little furry supernatural critters. I'm talking about the USB devices that you plug into your system that suck the life out of your laptop batteries. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about USB power management, how it works, and how it often does not work. I'm going to talk a little bit about new uh, USB power management features for USB 3.0 devices and uh, USB 2.1 devices, as well as talking about some new um, USB power management features in some current and future Intel systems. Um, so first, let's talk about how USB power management is supposed to work. There are three types of USB power management. Uh, first of all, you can put a USB device into a lower power state. So you can put the device into suspend. And once all of the devices that are attached to a particular USB host controller are suspended, you can put the host controller into suspend. So it goes into a, a deeper PCI uh, power management state. There's also USB link power management, which is a more recent type of power management that was added. And in that case, uh, you can put individual links in the whole tree of USB devices into a lower power state. So USB device suspend, uh, basically how it works is that when a device is inactive, you want to put it into a lower power state. And when all of the devices attached to a, a USB hub are in device suspend, then you can finally suspend the hub, and so on and so forth, until when all of the devices are attached to the host are suspended, you can suspend the host. Um, but the problem with that is that when you have one active USB device attached to the system, especially if you have an EHCI host controller, USB 2 host controller, um, then that host controller is going to continue to touch memory every time a USB transfer happens. And depending on how your platform is set up, how your CPU does its power management, this may mean that your CPU can't go into its deeper C states. So the end result is that one active USB device can cause your whole system power management to just go to crap. Um, so basically you want all your USB devices to be able to go into device suspend. There are several requirements for getting a device into suspend. The most important one is that the device itself has to support suspend. It's mandatory by the USB specification that these USB devices support uh, device suspend. However, there are many, many, many cheap USB devices, many, many broken USB devices. Uh, <laughs> um, the other issue is that uh, the driver itself, the USB device driver, has to support suspend. And it's hard to put uh, the USB, it's hard to put USB device suspend into drivers. Uh, and because there are so many USB device drivers, there are only some drivers in the kernel that have USB support. Some of the, uh, the more used uh, USB class drivers like webcams and Bluetooth radios, they have uh, device auto suspend support. But a lot of, if you have an esoteric uh, device like a USB video adapter or something like that, you may not have uh, device suspend support in your driver. Um, the other issue is that to suspend a device, the, the, um, you can't have any USB transfers going to the device. So the problem is if user space is polling all the time and polling the device, then you may have an active device even if the device supports suspend and the driver supports suspend. Um, some devices require remote wake up, and basically how that works is that when a device is suspended, um, the device can send a signal to the host and say, hey, an event happened, you should wake me up. Uh, for example, if you have a Bluetooth radio and you receive a message and the Bluetooth radio is suspended, then it can send a remote wake up signal back to the host. So some devices require remote wake up to work properly. Um, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, depending on your device manufacturer. So let's talk a little bit about how USB power management does not work. 
Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of device drivers that are missing auto suspend support. Sometimes it's also impossible to get your USB device to idle. Um, an example is a USB SD card reader. Whenever you have removable media, user space about every two seconds or so goes and pulls and sees, says, has that media changed? Have you inserted an SD card into your SD card reader? Have you uh, unmounted your device and suddenly your, your disk is gone, your USB disk? And so basically, since user space is sitting there pulling the device every two seconds, and the default timeout for putting a device into auto suspend is two seconds, you have an active device all the time. Uh, you can change either the auto suspend timeout for the USB device, or you can actually, in user space, change the polling rate for the SD card reader. But by default, basically, for USB mass storage devices, you're never going to get the device to go into suspend. And as I said, there are lots of USB devices that are broken when you try to suspend them. The most common thing that we see is that the device suspends OK, but when the host attempts to wake up the device, the device disconnects. Or it reconnects at a different speed. Um, and so there's also some unsafe suspend behavior that we've seen with USB devices. So in particular, there was a, a USB um, hard drive enclosure, and it had a spinning disk in it. And when you told the device to suspend, it would cut power to the drive without parking the disk heads on the disk. So we don't enable auto suspend by default anymore for devices because they can break that way. Um, also, the other common behavior we see is that with USB devices um, that send remote re wake up requests to the host, often they don't send them when you think they're supposed to. So for example, if you have a USB mouse and you put it into suspend, it's supposed to be able to tell the host when an event happens. And you would expect that when you move the mouse, the mouse would wake up and tell the host, hey, wake me up. Uh, or maybe if you click a button, then the mouse would wake up. But the behavior that we most often see is that the mouse does not send a remote wake up when you move it. It only sends a remote wake up when you click a button. So if you're sitting there and you're you know, typing some documents and you're staring off in the space thinking, oh, OK, well, maybe I want to edit that. You go to you know, move your mouse to edit that paragraph up there, and suddenly a mouse doesn't move. And you go, oh my god, is my system frozen? Uh, um, and so you don't, you know, basically, USB mice do not act the way we think that they should for device suspend. Um, and so basically, we, you probably should not enable device suspend for any sort of hid device. Keyboards as well, uh, when you suspend them, sometimes when you're typing and they send a remote wake up, you will lose some events. So you'll lose the first couple of keystrokes. Uh, so we just don't enable device suspend for hid devices. Um, sometimes firmware updates may help uh, with your USB devices. So if you update the firmware on your USB device, maybe now it will work with device suspend. However, many device vendors don't give us any way to tell what the firmware is on the device. So you're looking at two devices, and you don't know which firmware is running it because the device descriptors are exactly the same. Uh, so sometimes it's hard to tell you know, what firmware is actually running on the device and whether it will work. Um, the other issue with device suspend is that we've seen that device suspend behaves differently depending on which platform you're on. And it may actually be electrical issues with your platform or host controller bugs, depending on, on your host controller. Um, and so if we said, hey, we've got this USB device, we know it works fine, it comes out of device suspend, it resumes properly, it may work on one platform, but not on the other. So basically, you know, we started out saying we want to enable you know, good power management. We want to have all these devices suspend. We'll just make a blacklist in the kernel of all these bad devices, and it will work out just fine, right? No, the blacklist got much too large. It was too difficult to maintain in the kernel. So basically, we made it user spaces problem, which means we made it our users problem. I'm sorry. Um, you can, so basically what we did was we turned auto suspend off by default for all devices except for USB hubs. 
you as a user can go attempt to turn on USB device suspend. Uh, you can go find the magic sysfs file if you want, or the easier way is to use the tool called PowerTop. In the tunable section of PowerTop, you can go turn on auto suspend for your USB devices. In this particular example, you can see that I left it off for my mouse and keyboard and turned it on for everything else. Um, so basically, if you want to try and see if your devices su support device suspend, go into PowerTop, turn it on, and make sure that you try using the device to make sure that it resumes properly. So if you suspend your webcam, go then open cheese or, or LUVC view to make sure that it works afterwards. The problem with PowerTop, however, is that the suspend, auto suspend, turning it on, does not persist. So if you unplug a device and replug it back in, then the kernel thinks it's a different device and it will disable auto suspend for it. Um, so basically you'd have to go into PowerTop and re-enable auto suspend for it. Also, um, if you reboot your machine, then um, you, the auto suspend will be turned off for you, your USB devices. So if you want, if you've, if you've tested and you know that your devices support suspend and you want to enable it by default, then basically what you need to do is you need to write a UDIF rule that goes and looks at the device, product and vendor ID, and turns it on as soon as it's plugged in. And I've helpfully wrote a little bash script and stuck it up on GitHub if you'd like to go try that out. Um, so basically, if you take away anything from this talk, um, please go attempt to try and suspend your USB devices with PowerTop. If it works, go grab the script and um, enable it by default. And hopefully when you're on battery, you'll get uh, longer battery life. So let's talk a little bit about some new uh, USB power management features that should hopefully help a little better than device suspend. So there's something called USB link power management. Um, the challenges, and this was put in because there were so many challenges with USB device suspend. Basically the challenge is where you as the user needs to go turn on device suspend because it's so broken. Um, and it requires a lot of device driver modification. And since there are so many USB device drivers in the kernel, we're not going to get to them all in this amount of years. Um, the other problem is that with device suspend right now, the timeout is two seconds. Um, and so that's a little too coarse grained uh, for, for timeouts. We'd like something more on the millisecond or nanosecond level. Um, and also the other problem is, is that a device can't refuse to, to allow the host to put it into suspend. It's, the host is just going to do it. So if the device is in the middle, like if it's a Bluetooth radio and it's in the middle of receiving a message, it really doesn't want to go into that lower power state. But it has no way to tell the host that it shouldn't. So we needed a way to actually let devices say, no, 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 don't put me to sleep just yet. So that's sort of what USB link power management does. It's not quite as uh, power, good power savings as USB device suspend, but basically what the idea is, you have a, a tree of USB devices. And with USB 3, um, packets are routed rather than broadcast. So that means that specific links in the tree can be idle even when there's a, another device that's active. So you can put those individual links into lower power states. Um, and this is important. What they did was they pushed the smarts for when to put those links into lower power states to the hardware. So the hub, the USB hubs, USB 3 hubs, and USB 3 hosts internally keep track of when the last time they saw a packet to a device was. And after a specific amount of time, it will go tell that link to go into a lower power state. And the nice thing is the device can refuse to go into a lower power state if it's doing something. Um, so that means that you pushed all the smarts into the hardware. It still means the hardware has to work properly. Um, but it means that you don't have to modify any drivers, and all the operating system has to do is set the timeout for that particular link. Um, and, and, and so there are still USB devices that won't, they'll always refuse to go into a lower power link state. You know, they, they, the, the vendor just said, no, we don't have time to support this power management. So you can tell by looking at um, the parents port status registers and figuring out uh, is your device in these lower power states, U1 or U2. Um, 
And there are also some USB 3 hubs that don't really keep track of the timeouts. Um, so they will never ask their, their children to go into a lower power link state. So you, you, if you look at the registers and you don't see that the, the USB 3 device is in a lower power link state, it may be the USB 3 device's fault or it may be the, the, ho the hub's fault. Um, so they liked USB 3 link power management because it pushed the smarts into the hardware and allowed the links to go into lower power states on a, a millisecond or nanosecond kind of level. Um, and so they also redid, uh, they did an engineering change notice to the USB 2 spec to go push link power management into USB 2 devices. Now, because they didn't want to change USB 2 hubs and make the USB 2 hubs smart, they said, well, we'll only change the host control. So you only get USB 2 link PM for devices that are attached directly to the host. But if you've got something like an integrated webcam or a fingerprint reader in your laptop, that's probably attached directly to the host. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some cool um, new USB power management features that are in current Intel systems. Um, so for current Intel products, the, the current gen of, of CPU is Ivy Bridge. You may have heard that. Uh, the, the current code name is also, for the chipset, is Panther Point. And since the USB host controller is in the chipset, I only care about the chipset code name. So I'll refer to the chipset code names Panther Point for the current generation and Lynx Point for the next generation. So Panther Point is pretty cool because it finally has a USB 3 host controller. <coughs> Yay! Um, and it works great under Linux. I do a lot of testing on it. Um, now, but it only has four ports that are under the USB 3 host controller. Uh, the other ports are under the EH EHCI host controller, USB 2. It does support USB 3 link power management, which is really nice. Uh, Link's point, all of the ports can be under uh, USB, the USB 3 host controller, XHCI. Um, and since XHCI has a better um, architecture than EHCI, XHCI actually doesn't touch the memory every time there's a USB transaction. It has some caching in it. So basically, because you can have the ports under XHCI, even though they're USB 2 ports, you should get a little bit better power management. Uh, Lynx Point also supports USB 3 link power management and USB 2 link power management. It also includes this interesting new uh, and kind of controversial uh, USB power management feature. Basically, it was motivated because when you get something like a laptop, sometimes there's an option, like there's a Bluetooth USB option, and maybe you don't choose to pay for that Bluetooth USB device. And then you've got this empty port sitting in your laptop. And that port continues to be powered because it needs to be powered to detect whether a USB device is actually connected or, or disconnected to it. Um, and since you're not using that internal port at all, you really, really want to go just turn it off, completely off, because you know you're never going to connect anything to it unless you're some crazy hardware hacker. Um, the other issue is that sometimes when you get a laptop, there's internal USB devices that you really don't use. Like I never use my, my, US, my integrated USB webcam on my work laptop. I don't use my fingerprint reader and I definitely don't use my Bluetooth radio either. So I'd really like to be able to turn off those internal USB ports completely and save, save battery. So the Intel Lynx Point chipset includes um, some ACPI interfaces to actually go turn off USB ports. Now that does mean that you don't get connect events, disconnect events, and you don't get remote wake up events when a device is suspended. Um, so it is a bit uh, controversial and you can shoot yourself in the foot with it. Um, and Basically, I think for now, we're going to just turn it on for internal ports and not do. You can actually turn off external ports if you wanted to uh, via some SysFS interfaces. I think the code's finally going to get merged in 3.9. We'll see. Um, but it's an interesting new feature that's in Lynx Point. Um, so in summary, uh, there are a lot of broken USB devices out there, but there are also a lot of them that work as well. Um, so I would strongly suggest that you test with PowerTop and see if your USB devices uh, 
work properly with device spend. And if they do, go grab the, the uh, small script to go make a UDEV rule to turn on device suspend uh, on boot. And um, link pair management is pretty cool because it doesn't require you as a user to do anything. The hardware does all the work, and the operating system just has to set timeouts. And there's a pretty cool new uh, USB power management features for Intel systems. Are there any questions? Do you have any idea what uh, other operating systems do, like what Windows or Mac OS would do? Because they this seems horribly broken, and I presume they do nothing. They have a list. I mean, they have a list of devices that they've tested. Greg has that list. There are issues with whether it's copyrighted. So, and also what, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see distros do testing and just have a list internally and distribute it. Um, I mean, I, I started a list in the GitHub and I guess you can send me pull requests of devices that work, but basically this needs to be done on a larger scale to do testing. Um, does it also apply to like into like the touchpad and uh, keyboard in uh, in your laptop and roughly how much is a power saving by if you have a device that works how much could you, power could you be saving by enabling it? So so the question was does it work for for uh, your your mouse and keyboard? The thing is is that most laptops do not have USB mice and keyboards specifically because they draw so much power. They're usually connected via I2C. And so uh, the only ones that I know that do USB uh, mouse and keyboard are Apple. And that's because USB uh, trackpads are much more responsive than I2C. But that's because Apple can go and cherry pick a vendor because they're going to control the hardware to get the right one that actually has device suspend. So uh, how much power saving are we talking here for a typical laptop with a few things plugged into it? I'm not supposed to talk power numbers. <laughs> um, but it, you can see it for yourself if you go into PowerTop and you enable USB sus uh, suspend and host controller suspend. You can just look at how much more battery life you get. Um. <laughs> uh, without giving any actual numbers, um, it's probably more than you think because we, 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 we've noticed this phenomenon where you, you, you're, you're kind of hitting, if even one of your devices is, is awake, it's keeping the whole tree busy. So, and keeping the whole tree busy means you're keeping the host controller busy, which means you're keeping the, C, the, the DRAM busy, which means you're keeping the CPU busy, and it's just this huge long chain reaction. If you can get that one device off, because it's the last remaining device that's on, you can get everything off. And it's huge. So I'm on Intel. On Sandy Bridge, it's about four watts. <laughs> you yeah, um, look at um, the service space and uh, IPMI USB bridges. <laughs> That's You're the sort of thing rude on the server space when you have USB devices attached. Um, especially if you have an EHCI rate matching hub and a BMC in it. Uh, so I would highly suggest you look into uh, actually enabling device suspend for a server. Um, the problem is that, you know, it depends on your distro how uh, current the kernel is. Uh, so for for BMCs where you have a keyboard and mouse and, and uh, CD attached, uh, the CD driver doesn't have auto suspend support in it yet. And uh, some of the server BMCs don't disconnect the USB uh, emulated uh, CD driver when no one's actually logged into the system, which means that basically you're keeping EHCI and all the whole tree and your, your server active. And it's more than Sandy Bridge. We haven't done any specific power measurements, but there are options in HP ProLine G7s about exactly that. 
Um, you can turn off uh, keyboard and mouse connectivity when nobody's actually logged in. Presumably, there's enough of a power saving that they made that a real option that you can pick. So, so the, the issue with the B and C specifically is they need to disconnect themselves when no one's logged in, um, and some of them don't. So it depends on your BMC vendor. Okay, thank you okay. for the talk, Sarah. Thank you. Once again, from the conference organizers and Linux Australia, a gift to thank you for the speech. Thank you.